And I am so happy that you could join us this Thursday for another artist talk where we have a chance to meet artists who work and display their work at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. Before I introduce our artist, I just want to uh, remind everybody that the Marco Island Center for the Arts has a brand new website. So if you haven't had a chance, please check it out. We are still making some additions, but it will give you the opportunity if you're interested in taking classes either on site or online, you can register or you can come to the Art Center and pick up our new adult art classes and workshop uh, schedule, um, which we now have available. And if you're a member, this will be mailed to you shortly. So check out our website and I'm interested in hearing what you think. If you have any feedback, we would certainly appreciate it. Now today we have an artist who I love working with um, and that is Marjorie Pesek. Hi Marjorie. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us. Um, Marjorie has the unique distinction that she teaches in many arenas here at the Art Center. She has taught our younger students in our summer program. She has taught at our Young Artist Academy, which is students in middle and high school, and she teaches adult classes. And this year she teaches both on-site and online. So Marjorie, um, tell us a little bit about your classes that you're teaching. Well, should I tell you about my art first? Because then you would know what I'm teaching. Right? Why don't you tell us about the work you do in art and then explain how uh, what people will be learning in their classes with you? Because I think what's interesting is I, I do understand that people know what oil painting is and watercolor painting is. And people understand what collage is, but I teach a different form of collage. So I think it's kind of good today to kind of show you what that means. Um, anyway, I want to kind of do my background a little bit. Um, I guess I should show you something first. Um, well, there's, okay. Okay, okay then, well, let's go back. Okay. I'm just going to tell you a story and I'll <laughs> evolve into showing it. So I started doing this layered imagery artwork 30 years ago. And I call it later in Virginia, you'll, you'll find out later what that means. Um, I was in college, an uh, art major, and I was, I was in an oil painting class. And P.S., they do not teach collage in art school. But they teach sketching, they teach painting. That, and I had oil all over me. It smelled. The, the teacher wanted me to paint a self-portrait. I mean, I can't even draw. It was so frustrating. And so I saw this, this portrait, uh, this piece in an art show that was done with torn wallpaper, collage. And it, it was sort of abstract, not too abstract. I was so inspired, I'm like, I'm going to do that. So I go back to my dorm room, and I had this big piece of paper, and I drew out, as well as I could, a portrait of my, por of my parents that I had a photograph of. So I copied that. And I thought to myself, how do I get wallpaper? I don't even have a car. And But as all girls have, they have, I had glamour magazines, a whole stack of them. And I thought, well, I'll just substitute that for color. So what happened is, this is what happened. Wait, can you see it? Yeah, we can see it. Hold it back a little. OK, so it was a very big portrait. It was, a, it was bigger than this piece behind me. And I know you don't know what my parents look like, but it actually does look exactly like my parents. However, my mom wasn't happy. She didn't have a nose or a mouth. But, you know, later, she, so the point is, I couldn't draw a portrait. I couldn't sketch a portrait, but I could collage a portrait. So I, I discovered something I could use. They, my parents hung this in their house, framed it, and their friends came over for dinner. My sophomore year in college, I did this. And they commissioned me to do their own portrait. Oh, hold it up just so people can really see the fact that this isn't drawn. This is entirely created out of bits of paper with different colors to create the shading, the shapes. It's almost like it's like painting with this layered imagery, but you're actually gluing. I used to call it for a long time painting with paper. Because it's not like collage abstracts where you think of collage. It's just like 
I'm actually using this as my palette. Because I couldn't understand painting and I couldn't understand these other things, but something happened. So, yay. Anyway, so I got paid my sophomore year in college to do a portrait. So until I graduated, I was, I got word of mouth portraits. After I graduated, I thought I'll do this full time, even though my mom was mad about that. Like, are you crazy? Yeah. And I started showing in galleries. And once I started showing in galleries, I did other subjects. I moved to California. I started doing like sailboat scenes with all hidden images. If you go to my website, Marjorie Pesic Fine Art, you will see all my different images, over 800 images in 30 years. Um, but I, you know, oh, but what was really cool which unexpected is that Warner Brothers found me and they hired different artists to do their characters in whatever style um, that artist did, like a sculptor or would do sculpting of Bugs Bunny. And the first piece I did, I did, <laughs> I know, Peppy Le Pew and Penelope. Oh, wow. And that's all done with, with just cutting out paper and okay. assembling it. Just amazing. And you can't see right now, but there's hidden images in there. Um, anyway, so they had a show for me for this first piece. And this is right before the, the internet. So it was 1998. They had a show for me in, in California. And what they did, they did 250 reproductions of this original. And they distributed them by mail to all the stores in the U.S. and they sold out in two weeks. It was so much fun for two years I worked with Warner Brothers and did something every month for them and I was top selling artist, I have to say, and um, suddenly everything stopped and the stores closed, so unfortunately. But it was a great run. I saw my future, you know, as like a celebrity. Um, anyway, that aside, and move on, and I decided to move to Naples and open my own gallery off of Fifth Avenue. Um, and I had that for a few years, but I realized what sells, and then I'm gonna explain this better because I will generally explain what layered imagery is. So what sells most, mostly are dog portraits. People love their dogs, love, yeah. Right. I'm going to hold this up. This is one of Marjorie's pictures, and it's a black lab. And as she said, there are images within the image. So while she's created it, this is an image of a black lab. There are other parts of a dog within here. So yes, this is another one of Marjorie's pieces, and it is also a dog portrait. So what I do nowadays, you know, now that we have the internet, which we didn't have when I started, um, people <laughs> I mean, I'm aging myself. Um, people send me photos of their dog, and I put, this is a dog, inside the dog is going to be pictures of that dog. So anyway, so it becomes kind of a memory piece of their dog. Every piece that I do has hidden images in it, which makes it fun. It looks like an oil from, the, from afar, but when you, as you get closer, you discover other things. Um, so that's about it, I guess, except for... I, then I can talk about my classes. So. Why don't we talk about the classes? Because I'd love for people, as you said, it's listed in, in our catalog under specialty classes. And unless you really have it explained, you may not understand, A, how interesting it is, how artistic it is, and how fun it is. So why don't you talk a little bit about the class? And, and you actually offer two classes. You offer one that's sort of a beginner class that's, that's a short workshop and then a sort of intermediate class for people who might want to do a larger more complicated piece like their dog or something like that right or a sea turtle or a sea um, turtle so what i do in my beginning class i know people come into my beginning class a little fearful but i make it so easy that it becomes so much fun so what i do is i spread i prepare a canvas for everybody I sketch out a sketch of probably a butterfly, and it's always on a 9 by 12 canvas. So this is a finished piece, but I, I, I'll explain to you. Um, and I lay out magazines in the middle of the table, and all these you know, nice quality magazines. And we spend, what, maybe half hour to an hour looking through them, which is so much fun. 
we all like looking through magazines. We find, we find images to hide, we find colors and textures, we share what we find, and people get to know each other. Um, I simplify it by making like a paint by number, which I hope a lot of us know what that means, but I number it out. And, and in my class, I will show you how to do that. And it, I've done this for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years, and everyone comes out happy, not believing their artist at all, and they're like, I am. And I told them they will, and I was no matter what. I, I hope people understand. It's not something to be fearful of. You can actually finish a piece at the end of the class, and, and it looks like a butterfly. And like you know something, Marjorie? I took Marjorie's class, and today I found in my office my butterfly, yes, which was my uh, Tiffany jewelry butterfly. So all the pictures in mine were jewelry, and then I used uh, little scraps of paper to sort of create this Tiffany blue background. So even I was able to do it and it was really fun and you come out feeling so accomplished and really proud of what you've made. And as I said, this is actually in my office. Yeah, you're very proud of it. See, it's funny, people just come up like, and they show each other what they did and it's just cool. And they don't need, a lot, of these, a lot of these students don't know each other when they come into the class. After three hours, they totally know each other. It's just the best, and it, it's just a, an experience too. So, um, in a more advanced class, let's say you want to do a dog portrait, which you know we all love our dogs. You don't have to do a dog. You can, like I said, do a sea troll. You can do your car. A cat. Your cat. Your oh, bunny. <laughs> oh, I have this. Okay, here. Look. This is this is, this is a reproduction of that cat you like. Oh, I love that cat. I just found kitty cat with his pickle. That is a beautiful kitty. Uh, anyway, that, it's not easy to see that, but so then, let's say let's, I'm going to do it kind of step by step. So let's say you want to do this dog. I know it looks complicated, but I make it easy. I break it down for you, so you don't have to you don't have to think about it. Um, just have fun, and then so I give you a sketch. That looks complicated again. I, I didn't mark this one out, but, and then these are kind of a couple steps in between. Oh, wow. And then you come up with this. Seriously, this will, that's the steps you take. It just builds up kind of like a puzzle. So, and again, that's the longer class. And you can do any size canvas. It doesn't have to be big. Um, so let me, let me clarify that it, the beginner class, the one where you can make something like this, is a three-hour workshop, whereas the intermediate class where you're going to make a more complex work of art is a, it goes from 10 to three? Yeah, five, five hours. It's right. And tell us a little bit about how these classes have translated for you to online classes. What's well, been your experience when you're teaching this online? It, it, we have to, we do it shorter online. Um, and it's just because I, when I'm hands-on, I can hands-on do it and actually cut things out for you. So what we have to do online is actually hold it up, show it um, during the class, ask me questions, but you're going to have to hold it up. And I can walk you through it. So I can say, well, you know, you, if you do this and draw this out, I'd have to explain it. And maybe somehow, and I can tilt my computer probably down and, you know, to the, my table. And I will show you how I can sketch it out for you. So I think that's the best way to do it. And if you can, if you can see visually, I hopefully can can explain that. And I'll spend as much time, even after we get off the class, you can contact me, and I'll help you finish it. So. Excellent. Well, as I said, Marjorie, base is it. I checked the schedule earlier today, and Marjorie is offering a beginner class and an intermediate class once a month here at the Art Center as well as offering the beginner class online once a month. And she's doing, I believe it's February and April. She'll do the longer class if you want to do it online. I know some people may not be coming to Marco this season or may have moved away, but still want to stay connected to the art center or may just not be going out. So if you wanted to do that, the more advanced, the intermediate workshop is going to be a two-day workshop, and that'll be in February and April. And again, if you want to check this out, go to our website, www.marcoislandart.org, O-R-G, and you can see all of our classes and workshops that are happening.
Marjorie, what do you have there? <laughs> I have to promote the 50th anniversary of the Mark of our Center. I did the cover. You did the artwork, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so that's super cool. I'm glad to be part of that. Um, anyway, so yes, I hope that this all works out. And, all uh, just because you brought up the book, this is a beautiful book that was edited by Kat Rinaldo. The artwork on the cover was done by Marjorie Pesek. And this book is for sale in our gift gallery, as well as you can purchase it online in our gift shop on our website. And it makes a beautiful gift. The holidays are coming up. Um, so check it out. Uh, and we highly recommend it. A great way of looking at the history of the Art Center, as well as looking at Marco for the last 50 years. No, the inside, the inside is quite amazing. I was very impressed, very professional, beautiful, so. Well, Kat Rinaldo did a great job, and we are in the process of setting up a time for her to talk about the book and actually do a book signing. So keep an eye out on our website, because we're going to be doing that with her, and you'll have a chance to hear from the editor and she really was able she was the visionary in putting this whole concept together um so if you want a book that's signed by her keep an eye out and we will be doing that at some point marjorie my last question to you who or what has been a major influence for you as an artist well it's funny um i don't know if a lot of people know who david hockney is but I remember my parents gave me a book of David Hockney, and I just couldn't put it down. And you know, he does these kind of fun, kind of California-like paintings with bright colors and pools and stuff. But what I liked the most was his photo montages, where he uses uh, Polaroid photographs. And this is obviously way before we could have our own printers. It was you don't you know, it wasn't even and before we had cell phones where they had so David Hockney did panoramic views with these Polaroid cameras and he montaged it. So this is one example of, and you can't really tell in this photo, but all these little squares are photos. He took separate photos with the oh, what did I say, Polaroid camera, printed it out and glued them together, which is crazy. And then here's one that's more panoramic that he did a lot of stuff like that. This is probably one stage in, in his career. And it just that's I think that's what's in the back of my head when I was in college and I just I loved it and I thought collage that is so perfect for me and I just just happened you know just probably because it was an influence that was in my mind and you know well and you certainly have taken this and taken this art form to a whole new level uh, Marjorie's work is really quite extraordinary but you can create something that you can enjoy and exhibit yourself in her class, which I highly recommend. And so, give as a gift. You can actually do a portrait of your daughter's cat and give it as a gift for Christmas or whatever, birthday. Absolutely. Marjorie, I want to thank you for joining us here today. Um, we are always so grateful for all that you do here at the Art Center. Um, as we wrap up, I want to let everybody know that a brand new exhibition is actually being installed as we speak down in the gallery. The exhibition is called Here and There. It is the work of five Cuban born artists. It is dynamic, it is compelling, it is something you do not wanna miss. Um, we are going to be hosting a second Tuesday gallery reception this upcoming Tuesday, however, because of issues right now and the fact that your health, safety, and well-being is of paramount importance to us, we are only going to allow 30 people by reservation only. We do ask that you wear a mask in the building, but we will be serving wine out in the courtyard so you'll be able to have a glass of wine and socialize. So if you want to join us, meet some of the artists, please call the Art Center, 239-394-4221. Make your reservation, and please join us for what will be our first Second Tuesday Gallery reception since March. We'd really like to see you. So Marjorie, I thank you again. That's all for today. We'll be seeing you next Tuesday with another Artist Talk. We wish you a good weekend. 
and know that you are part of our art family and we will always strive to be your art home. Bye-bye, everybody.